Estates don't come any quicker and very few cars of any kind do full stop. This fourth generation RS6 Avant promises a completely fresh set of dynamic attributes thanks to four wheel steering and the Quattro Sport rear differential and launch control. Under the bonnet, meanwhile, the engineers have added mild hybrid assistance to Audi's 4-litre TFSI twin-turbo V8, which develops 600 PS and a thumping 800 newton meters of pulling power. The result is rest to 62 miles an hour in 3.6 seconds, 124 miles an hour in just 12 seconds, and one queasy-looking Labrador. Does the luxury estate segment really need contenders offering the option of supercar performance? Audi thinks so. This fourth generation C8 Series RS6 is the quickest model of its kind, as all its predecessors have been too. There have been quite a few of those looking back in the Audi Sport catalogue, the RS2 Avant of 1992 and the first generation RS4 Avant of 2000 were based on the brand's more compact designs, but with the initial C5 Series RS6 Avant uh, first seen in 2002, Ingolstadt stepped things up a gear, offering buyers in search of the ultimate station wagon a larger and more powerful choice. That first 4.2 litre V8 version offered 450 PS, while in 2008, its faintly frightening 5 litre V10 engined C6 series successor upped the ante still further to 579 PS. In 2013, with the launch of the third generation RS6, Audi initially stepped back from the spiralling horsepower race a bit, delivering a 4 litre twin turbo V8 with 560 PS, but competition from the Mercedes AMG E63 forced that C7 series model to up its game, and by the end of the design's production run, that car was being offered in an uprated performance form, complete with 600 PS. The same output still features with this car, the fourth generation C8 series model launched in late 2019. This time though, the power plant features a 48 volt mild hybrid electrical system for extra efficiency. And there's a new launch control system, plus wheel selective torque control and a Quattro Sport differential, which shifts drive torque between the rear wheels when you're cornering at speed. There's also a new five-link rear suspension design, plus considerable advances in cabin quality, media connectivity, and safety provision. But best of all, this car remains uber fast, as we're about to find out. So here we are with what this car's exterior designer, Francesco Domore, describes as the Autobahn killer. It does wear a smart suit though. The first and second generations of RS6 offered a saloon body style option, but this model's C7 series predecessor combined itself to station wagon status, and this C8 version follows suit. This model's Audi Sport showroom stablemate, the RS4, has in recent years switched from a V8 to a V6. This RS6 though sticks with this 4-litre twin-turbo V8, which replaced the 5-litre Lamborghini V10 in this model line back in 2013. This current power plant, uh, which has now been freshly embellished with a 48-volt starter generator mild hybrid system, uh, this now develops more power, 600 PS, than the old Lambo unit used to, and that promises a great deal when you get behind the wheel. Now, unless you choose the optional sports exhaust, there's not too much drama when you thumb the red framed aluminium starter button. The engine woofles into life and it settles down to an innocuous idle, as you might expect from much the same power plant as you get in the syrupy smooth Bentley Continental GT. Deep down though, you know that this is just a feature of the RS6's dual personality. It can do mild-mannered if it has to, but you don't buy a car as expensive as this one unless it's capable of more, much more. 
Well, just how much more do you need? A new launch control system inserted into the 8-speed ZF Tiptronic Auto gearbox has made start off from rest even more explosive than it was before. Uh, 62 miles an hour is demolished in just 3.6 seconds. Uh, that's a Ferrari-style stat that seems even more incredible when you consider that this Audi weighs getting off at twice as much. Uh, just as importantly, it's all accompanied by a glorious howl that puts you in mind of a Lancaster bomber accelerating up to takeoff speed. Maximum velocity in this case is fixed, courtesy of a speed limiter at 155 miles an hour, which the Ingolstadt brand removes with the top spec Vorsprung trim to boost the figure up to 174 mph. Unlike Audi Sport's uh, latest e-tron models, where the Quattro four-wheel drive system is largely a matter of electronics and software, the setup here is a proper mechanical one with a Torsen uh, gear-driven differential pushing 60% of drive to the rear axle in normal conditions. At the slightest sign of slip, though, up to 70% of torque can go frontwards or up to 80% to the rear, depending on what's needed. So far, so familiar. The RS6 has always been about grip and go. In its earliest incarnations, though, it often struggled to deliver much else. With this car's direct predecessor, we found that the handling was significantly improved, and this C8 series car takes a further step forward again. Probably the key change here is the adoption of Audi's dynamic all-wheel steering system, by which the rear wheels are steered in the same direction as the fronts at high speeds for greater stability. Now this combines with two things that we liked from before. First, a wheel selective torque control, which at speed on the inside of a bend breaks the wheels with reduced load a fraction before they would otherwise begin to spin. And secondly, Audi's Quattro Sport Differential, which shifts torque from side to side across the rear axle as you power through a corner, thus improving traction, stability and dynamics. It should all deliver you everything you need to ruin the day of that supercar driver just behind you. And it does. Corner turn-in feels astonishing. There's no roll, there's no understeer, there's no hesitation. At almost any speed, the car just goes where you point it, and you can almost feel the rear axle shunting torque about to power you through the bend. It's brilliant. Perhaps less significant are two of the other new engineering headlines here. Uh, there's air suspension on an RS6 for the first time. It's a fully adaptive RS air suspension with electronic shock absorption control system. And it augments the car's already 20 millimeter lowered ride height by further lowering the chassis by an additional 10 millimeters at over 74 miles an hour. Curiously, Audi reverts to more conventional steel springs with adaptive dampers for the alternative RS Sport Suspension Plus system fitted to the top and supposedly more focused Vorsprung model. For its combination of wafty ride when you want it and firm springing when you don't, we prefer the standard four corner air sprung setup that's been fitted here though, even though it's uh, not as sophisticated as the three chamber version of that system that's used by Porsche. Something else that Audi needs to talk to its VW Group sister brand Porsche about is this car's steering setup. Yes, it is better than it was before, and that's thanks to the adoption here of a variable ratio progressive rack, which gives more direct responses to larger steering angles. But there's uh, still not the kind of feel that you'd ideally want when you're pressing on at speed through tight turns. Now, this can be a little disconcerting at first, especially when you're first getting used to this RS6 around tight, twisty roads. It's one of the things that makes it difficult to feel that the car is shrinking around you when you're really driving it hard. Instead, you're always aware that this is a sizable hunk of machinery. Steering feel, as you'd expect, is one of the parameters that you can influence by use of the Drive Select Driving Mode system. It weights up quite a lot when you choose dynamic, but extra weight, uh, that isn't the same as extra feel. The other drive modes on offer are the usual Audi ones, uh, comfort or efficiency. Now, there isn't an individual option, though, because the RS6 now provides something that's much better in the form of two configurable RS mode settings, which at speed you can immediately activate via this button here on the steering wheel. 
This feature, which is clearly copied from BMW's M cars, allows you to set up this Audi as a race driver which set up their race car, giving you comfortable, balanced or dynamic options for the drive system, uh, suspension and the steering. Plus, you can also choose subdued, automatic or pronounced for the bark of the sports exhaust. You can program two RS modes, usually one for hard driving and the other for commuting duties. Do that right at the outset and you'll probably never bother with the other drive select settings at all. What else? Well, in a car weighing nearly 2.2 tonnes that's capable of up to 174 miles an hour, you're going to need a very good set of brakes. And sure enough, the RS6 gets a set of the biggest stoppers imaginable with 10 piston front calipers clamping onto steel composite vented discs. Optional ceramic discs, which save 34 kilos and resist fade during track driving, are available as an option, but only for the kind of cost that very few could justify. And to feel the difference that ceramics would make on a public road, you'd have to be driving so fast that afterwards you might just as well stop by the local constabulary and just give yourself up. As ballistic as the RS6 is under full acceleration, it's perfectly civilized when you're not in the mood. Uh, there are lots of reasons for that. Take the way, for example, that the four-wheel steering system's ability to make the rear wheels steer slightly in the opposite direction to the fronts at parking speeds makes low-speed maneuvering so much easier. Now, perhaps our favorite engineering element, though, uh, lies with this car's accelerator pedal calibration. Uh, it's a thing of rare beauty. The first third of its travel allows a gentle limo-like step off the line, the urge building only as you go further. Only at the very end of its travel does the RS6 go really wild. As a result, it's easy to control the Jekyll and Hyde personality of this car uh, machine, long portrayed as the flat track bully of the Autobahn. Now it's evolved for the better, and in ways that aren't always obvious. Uh, there's real talent here, and yes, there's subtlety. That you might not expect. The RS6 hints at its fearsome capabilities via a predictably aggressive exterior. With the exception of the front doors, the roof and the tailgate, the exterior of this RS6 Avant is different from the ordinary A6 Avant. It comprises exclusively RS specific parts, perhaps most particularly these broadly flared wheel arches which expand the car's width by 40 millimeters on each side. These house huge Audi Sport wheels of either 21 inch or as in this case, 22 inches in size. We've got the black gloss turned finish rims here. Otherwise, the characteristic advanced silhouette dominates in profile an elongated front section, a long straight roof line and flat D pillars, which rest on the car's distinctive quattro blisters. RS specific seals with black, or as in this case, uh, carbon inserts, also add emphasis to the flanks. The mirrors and roof rails come in either silver, or as in this case, black, depending on trim. Up front, the prominently power-domed bonnet flows into Audi's usual big single-frame grille, in this case with a three-dimensional honeycomb structure finished in gloss black. It's flanked by now slimmer RS Matrix LED laser headlights, below which uh, side air inlets, which can be trimmed in carbon fibre, open onto the strikingly drawn RS bumper and extend almost into the lower edge of the lamp units. That's a cube borrowed from the R8 supercar. The dynamic rear end consists of this race style roof edge spoiler and an RS specific bumper incorporating this prominent diffuser and design elements in gloss black with the option as here of carbon trimming. In Hallmark RS style, the RS exhaust system uh, flows on both sides into oval chrome colored tailpipes and the LED rear lights feature dynamic scrolling indicators like those at the front along with RS specific sequencing when the vehicle's locked and unlocked. So, lots to set this super estate apart outside. Will the same hold true in the cabin, which you enter via large doors which project the Audi Sport logo onto the ground as they open? To some extent, the answer is yes, although the changes here are a little more subtle. You'll probably notice these RS Sport seats first. They come in perforated Valcona leather with a honeycomb pattern and uh, RS embossing too. Their perforation also allows cooled ventilation for the first time. Next, you might take in this RS branded 
flat bottomed perforated sport leather steering wheel which is here can be trimmed in lovely Alcantara and features large aluminium RS shift paddles and a button which allows the driver to directly select preset RS1 and RS2 drive modes. And of course there's trimming that's appropriate to supercar status, double stitch door cards with Alcantara, silver and carbon finishing and this layered dash with a double stitch top above carbon style finishing and a center panel that's trimmed in silver and piano black. As usual with large Audi models these days, media features are taken care of by three screens. Let's start with the one that you view through this grippy RS wheel here. The RS6 has its own version of the brand's uh, usual 12.3 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle display with a view button on the wheel spoke offering various layout options. Now the standard one gives you indicator bands for revs and MPG on the left with speed on the right and the customizable section in the middle which is next to an engine temperature and a turbo boost readout. Or you can select a more focused RS display which gives you a boomerang shaped uh, central rev counter above speed and gear shift readouts with power and torque displays on the right and the customizable section on the left. That's your starting point. Now comes the driver orientated customization. You can use these steering wheel spoke arrow buttons to prioritize what you see in the customizable parts of the two displays. You can choose from data, radio info, uh, phone settings or navigation. The latter neatly expands into a full screen map. If you choose the data option, then there are further choices that you can scroll through with this little uh, steering spoke thumb wheel an onboard computer section that will give you date and time, uh, trip info, a driver assist graphic or traffic sign information. Alternatively there are sport displays which cover a G meter plus tire pressure loss and power and torque readouts. You might also want to fill the customizable screen space with lap times, uh, acceleration measurements or a reduced screen which blanks it completely for ultimate driver focus. There's also a bespoke section for this center dash 10.1 inch touchscreen, primarily in the car section where there's an RS monitor screen. Uh, the main purpose of that is to show in real time use of the sport differential plus engine oil, coolant, uh, gear oil and brake discs. In other selectable screens, the RS monitor can also show maximum G meter values and tire pressure. Uh, the central screen is also your starting point for tailoring those uh, two drive modes we mentioned earlier on. Uh, via the Audi Drive Select Driving Mode screen, you can choose your own parameters for drive system, uh, for suspension, steering and engine sound. So um, essentially you'll be setting up your RS6 just as a race driver which set up their race car. It's brilliant. Let's take a look in the back. Thanks to this C8 Series A6 model's long 2.93 metre wheelbase, the back seat offers reasonable space for three adults, but it's much more comfortable for two, and you get a fold-down central armrest with storage and cup holders. Uh, there are rear seat back nets and the standard four-zone climate system, which gives rear seat folk this separate control screen here. Uh, below these two central vents, there's a 12-volt socket when what you really need in this day and age is a couple of USB ports. Uh, ridiculously though, you have to stretch right up to the priciest Vorsprung level of trim to get those as standard. Uh, these overhead individual reading light spots are nice and there are coat hooks on the B pillars and in the grab handles too. Uh, many buyers will want to specify this two-part panoramic glass roof which uh, floods the cabin with light. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, there's a more swept back look for this C8 series design, but it hasn't impinged on boot space, uh, which when the powered tailgate finally rises is still rated at 565 litres as before. Uh, you get these useful floor mounted rails, but there's very little cargo room beneath the base. Uh, lift the floor and there's a plastic recessed tray, but below that there's no standard spare wheel, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, there are bag hooks on either cargo sidewall. You get an elasticated net on the left and a 12 volt socket on the right. Plus there are classy LED strip lights on both sides.
The center part of the 40-20-40 split rear backrest can be retracted if you want to push longer items like skis into the passenger compartment without disturbing a couple of rear seated folk. If you need to push the seat backs down completely, you do it by pulling on these cargo sidewall levers, which reveals a 1,680 litre space. It's the sort of capacity that a supercar owner could only dream about. Whichever way you look at it, buyers will be facing a hefty price tag for an RS6, around £94,000 as a starting point at the time of this test in summer 2021, which would be a lot for a large estate car, but perhaps it isn't so much when you consider this one's performance credentials. After all, only purebred supercars can match the RS6 for pace, and they come with supercar price tags and supercar impracticality, rendering them out of the question for many. Whatever your view on it, there's no doubt you'll have an easier time justifying the purchase of an RS6 to your other half than a McLaren, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Uh, with that issue well and truly solved, you might want to take a look at one of the more expensive trim options being offered here. There are two, uh, both of which will take you into six-figure territory. Here we've got the meaner-looking carbon black variant, which at the time this test cost around £102,000. Or you could really spoil yourself and go for a top Vorsprung trim, which at the time of this test retailed at just over 111,000. As for rivals, well, we've talked about supercars. There are lots of those, but that's not really what's being served up here. In terms of an uber fast estate, in the absence of a BMW M5 touring model, come on BMW, please release that to us. There is only this Audi's traditional rival, the Mercedes AMG E63, which is now a much closer rival than it used to be because Mercedes now offers that with four wheel drive. That Stuttgart brand only now offers the E63 in fully kitted out night edition premium plus form, which is clearly the car that this carbon black RS6 has been benchmarked against because the Mercedes costs around £102,000. The Merc has slightly more power than this Audi, 620 PS, plays 600, but an E63 driver might struggle to keep an RS6 in sight on a twisty road. If that's enough to sell you this Audi, then you're going to need to know just how generous Ingolstadt has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. And let's start with the standard model, which, as you'd expect, for the best part of £100,000, isn't in any way standard when it comes to the specification on offer. Let's start with the outside. You get HD matrix LED headlamps with the Audi laser light system and dynamic RS specific turn signals. Those dynamic turn signals also feature with the rear LED combination lamps. There are big 21 inch 10 spoke star design alloy wheels with RS steel brakes and black brake calipers. Plus key engineering features include quattro four wheel drive with a sports differential to vary torque across the rear axle, dynamic all wheel steering and the Audi drive select driving mode system complete with two customizable RS modes. For the exterior, there are RS specific bumpers plus a front spoiler, front side flaps and a rear diffuser in matte aluminium. The RS6 exterior package includes wheel arch extensions and a big rear spoiler which electrically extends depending on speed. Plus there are aluminium roof rails, power folding mirrors, privacy glass, headlamp washers and preparation for tow bar installation. You can specify metallic paint without extra cost too. The RS6 interior does a decent job of justifying the car's pricing. Uh, the standard A6 feels genuinely special inside with some beautiful design touches and real quality throughout. Now that gives the RS6 a solid platform which it builds on with Valcona leather heated and ventilated RS Sport seats and expensive looking aluminium detailing with dark inlays in matte brushed aluminium. Uh, the flat-bottomed Audi Sport steering wheel that features powered adjustment and there are aluminium gear shift paddles too. Uh, there's also stainless steel pedals, RS illuminated door sill trims and Audi Sport logo projection onto the ground when you open the doors at night. Finishing touches include a multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack, a black cloth headliner and leatherette finishing for the upper instrument panel and for the door shoulders. 
The 12.3-inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen has a selectable bespoke RS layout and specific readouts for turbo boost pressure and oil temperature too, plus a lap timer and a screen for acceleration measurements. The 10.1-inch center stack MMI navigation infotainment display has a dedicated RS monitor screen. And as usual on an A6, it offers a DAB Audi sound system, voice control, the Audi smartphone interface for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus, there's the Audi music interface with a three-year subscription to Audi Connect media services. Below the central monitor is a further 8.6-inch display, which displays the uh, functions of the standard four-zone climate control system. And other features incorporated as part of the car's standard spec include the Audi phone box wireless charger, a rear view camera, an air quality package, cruise control with a speed limiter, auto headlamps and wipers, and a powered tailgate. Enough with standard trim, let's say you want to stretch to this carbon black specification that gives you gloss carbon inserts for the front spoiler, the front side flaps, the side sill inserts and the rear diffuser, plus a black finish for the side window trim strips, uh, for the roof rails too, uh, the mirror housings and for the Audi Rings logo on the grille and the tailgate. The wheels with this carbon black model are larger 22 inch black gloss turned finished rims. Inside with this spec, you get the gray themed RS design package, which includes lovely Alcantara trimming for the steering wheel, the gear shifter, and for the sides of the center console. Plus the door armrest is finished in fine Nappa leather, as is the instrument panel and the door rails. And you get carbon twill trim inlays. That only leaves top Vorsprung trim, which, as you'd expect for the price, includes just about everything. Uh, you get the upgraded RS Sport Suspension Plus with dynamic ride control package, and the top speed is increased to 174 miles an hour. The 22-inch rims uh, feature a titanium matte gloss turned finish, and there's a black rear sports exhaust system. The exterior is decorated with Audi's gloss black styling package, which covers with gloss black just about everything that will be uh, covered with carbon on the carbon black model we have here. You also get a panoramic glass sunroof, uh, power door closure and extra camera safety kit that you'd have to pay more for with the two lesser trim levels. We're going to get onto that in just a moment. Uh, inside, Vorsprung trim gives you a head-up display, a 360-degree camera and a park assistant that steers you into spaces. Plus, there's a Bang & Olufsen 16-speaker, 730-watt sound system, heat for the rear seats, USB ports for the rear seat passengers, and inlays in natural grey-brown, fine-grain ash. Enough with standard spec, let's take a look at options. Now, we think the most essential big-ticket item is the Throatier RS Sports exhaust system we have here, which costs £1,450 more. You might also think that the more advanced suspension setup, RS Suspension Plus with dynamic ride control, is worth an extra £1,300. You can additionally add RS steel brakes with red calipers, or if you're going to be going on track days and you have a huge budget, then there are RS ceramic brakes for a cool £9,200 more, and they're identifiable by grey calipers. If you've chosen the entry-level model, you might well want to spend around £2,300 more on an optional comfort and sound pack, which is standard further up the range. This gives you the Bang & Olufsen premium sound system, a 360-degree surround view camera setup, and advanced key keyless entry. As for other extras, well, the panoramic glass roof is pricey, but it's very desirable, as is a head-up display and the parking assist with parking aid plus system that'll steer you into spaces. For the interior, you can specify a full leather package and inlays in either fine grain ash or carbon twill. The paint range for the RS6 event includes 13 colours, including the two RS specific colours, Nardo Grey and Sebring Black Crystal Effect, along with a choice of five matte effect paint finishes. For the luggage compartment, you can specify the usual compartment boxes, shells and trays, plus partition grills. And for the roof, acquiring crossbars will allow you to fit a roof box or racks for bikes, skis, snowboards or kayaks. Plus, of course, you can add an extending tow bar. 
Enough with optional features, let's move on to look at safety. As you'd expect in this day and age, there's an autonomous braking system included in that roster. Uh, Ingolstadt calls its setup Audi PreSense Front. Unlike other similar packages, uh, this one scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive and it will automatically brake the car to try to avoid them. Uh, if that's if you don't respond to the warnings, of course. Uh, there's also a lane departure warning setup, and that issues a warning if you drift out of your lane on the highway, and it'll apply subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you ought to be. It's always possible to go further, though, and should you want extra peace of mind, your Audi Centre salesperson will doubtless point you towards the two extra cost safety packs available, both of which are standard if you stretch to the priciest Vorsprung trim level. Let's start with the City Assist pack, which includes three main features. Side Assist, which works as a blind spot monitor, uh, warning you on the move if you're dangerously about to overtake uh, in the path of another vehicle. Cross Traffic Assist Front, warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions and it can, if necessary, automatically apply the brakes, preventing an accident. And PreSense Rear warns you via a flashing light if you're just about to be hit from behind so you can try to take avoiding action. It can also warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking space. The other key optional safety pack you can specify is the Tour Pack, which includes five key camera-driven features. Arguably the cleverest part of the package is Adaptive Cruise Assist, which uses a radar sensor, a laser scanner, a front camera and ultrasonic sensors all networked together to permanently monitor your RS6's surroundings. Now drawing on feedback from these systems, plus local speed restrictions and also navigation data, Adaptive Cruise Assist will be able to help you to more proactively control acceleration, braking, lane positioning and distance to the vehicle in front, all at any speed and with functionality which is equally effective whether you're stuck in traffic or completely alone on the road. It's really clever. As for the four other tour pack features, well, there's high beam assist, which automatically dips the LED headlamps in the face of oncoming traffic. Traffic sign recognition, which can picture road signs and display them on the dash. And Audi PreSense Basic, and that activates if a collision is inevitable, and it'll help you to withstand it by instantly tightening the seat belts, closing any open windows, and also closing the sunroof if you have one fitted. Uh, finally, as part of this pack too, there's an emergency assist element which is added into the standard lane departure warning system. That's able to autonomously bring the car to a safe controlled stop if you don't respond to repeated warnings about drifting out of your lane, as might be the case if, for example, you were suddenly taken ill at the wheel. It all means that in driving an RS6, there are a lot of safety systems to oversee, particularly if you ticked a few options boxes. With all available features fitted, your RS6 will come with a sensor set, including up to five radar sensors, five cameras, plus 12 ultrasonic sensors and a radar scanner. So how on earth can you monitor all the different features in everyday driving and decide which ones you want to activate at any given time? Well, Audi has tried to simplify that process here by providing a driver assist button at the bottom of the center stack. And that's there to allow the selection of the kind of electronic security blanket that you want. Basic includes only the most important items, maximum gives you everything, and individual allows you to pick and choose the features that you want activated. You might hope that this car's new 48 volt mild hybrid electrical system would allow the twin turbo V8 to combine maximum performance with creditable efficiency. Sadly not. In fact, the addition of electrification here seems to have had very little significant effect at all on running costs. The Ingolstadt brand says up to 22.6 mpg is possible on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 283 grams per kilometre of CO2. Interestingly, those figures almost exactly replicate what you'd get from this car's only direct rival, the Mercedes-AMG E63 4Matic Plus Estate, which probably isn't coincidental. Audi's worked a lot harder than Mercedes to achieve those figures. The E63 doesn't bother with MHEV tech, which really ought to make more of a difference than it does. A belt alternator starter lies at the heart of this electrified system, and up to 12 kilowatts of power can be recovered 
during light deceleration and it's stored in a separate lithium-ion battery. If the driver lifts off the accelerator at a speed of between 34 and 99 miles an hour, the drive management selects one of two options. Depending on the driving situation and the setting in the standard Audi Drive Select Dynamic Mode system, the car recovers energy or coasts for up to 40 seconds with the engine switched off. Uh, Reapplying pressure on the accelerator instructs the belt alternator starter to restart the engine. MHEV technology also allows for start-stop operation at speeds of up to 13 miles an hour. Another key efficiency focused component is the cylinder on demand COD system which at low to intermediate loads and speeds deactivates cylinders 2, 3, 5 and 8 in the high gears by switching off injection and ignition and closing the intake and exhaust valves. Reducing your RS6 to 4 cylinder status apparently saves up to 0.18 of a gallon every 62 miles, which is much more of a marginal gain than the complexity of the technology leads you to expect. When the driver presses the accelerator pedal, the missing cylinders are of course reactivated instantly. There's also an efficiency setting for the drive select driving mode system and Audi's clever predictive efficiency assistant uh, that uses GPS data to tailor the drive driving characteristics of the car to most efficiently suit the current traffic flow and the route topography. We're not quite so enthused about the size of the 75 litre fuel tank which is about as small as Audi could have got away with in a car of this type and will, Ingolstadt claims, serve you for a theoretical 450 to 500 miles in the unlikely event that you're able to match the quoted combined cycle returns. In the real world we'll guess you'll be lucky to see more than about 300 miles between fill-ups. Uh, you'll also have to swallow a top-of-the-shop Group 50 insurance, pricey tyres and brakes, and you'll have to accept a rather unspectacular three-year 60,000 mile warranty. Which then leaves what is really the big ticket cost for any high-power petrol engine car owner, depreciation. Now that would be a real issue if we were talking about the big V8 petrol A6 models that Audi no longer offers, or even this car's stable mate, the lesser S6. In contrast though, the RS6 uh, quits itself rather better. Uh, there's a reason that production of this model in each of its generations tends to be limited to just a few years, uh, namely to ensure that demand outstrips supply, and that makes for a buoyant used market. As a result, to give you just one example, a 2008 second generation C6 series RS6 V10 is today worth over 20% more than its equivalent a Mercedes E63 rival. Simple supply and demand and an approach that clearly works. So exactly who is it who goes out and buys a vehicle capable of transporting a family of four and their holiday luggage on a sub eight minute lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife, overtaking a gaggle of supercars in the process? For sure, like all its predecessors, the Audi RS6 Avant is definitely not your average executive station wagon. It still may not be the most powerful estate car in the world, but in every meaningful respect, it's the fastest, exactly as it was designed to be. Speed, it seems, is not directly relational to power, and by adding launch control for spellbiting starts and a Quattro Sport differential for astonishing cornering traction, Audi has managed to make this fourth-generation RS6 feel even faster than its tremendously capable predecessors. Quite how much faster only becomes apparent when you exercise the throttle pedal with intent. This thing is quite jaw-droppingly quick, certainly rapid enough to make its key rival from Mercedes sometimes seem as if it's dropped anchor. This Audi still isn't perfect, of course. Steering remains the most obvious area for improvement, while some will feel the car's personality only really emerges when the optional RS Sports exhaust is fitted. And despite an emphasis on weight saving with this C8 series model, it's still large and heavy enough to lose a little to Audi's smaller RS4 Avant on tight and really twisty roads. So, where does all that leave us? While some will find the idea of a saloon or a state car with 800 newton meters of grunt from a 4 litre bi turbo V8 difficult to reconcile with the modern motoring age of proliferating speed cameras, spiralling fuel prices, and emissions based vehicle taxation. But potential customers here won't care. And anyway, it feels churlish to grumble.
the engineers at Audi Sport have once again hit virtually all their design objectives with this fourth generation RS6. It has a charisma all its own, an incredibly special interior, and it looks like a supercar's evil henchman from the outside. Best of all, though, that devastating power never, ever loses its appeal. The result is an astonishing machine and a monumental force to be reckoned with.